Hey, man, praise the Lord, everyone. Hey, man, my name is Pastor Paulette Bostic, and I pastor Jesus of Nazareth Free Will Baptist Church in Essex, Maryland. Just give me a few minutes of your time, and I'm going to set up the talk, amen, for our next topic, amen? Amen. Let's take a few seconds just to picture church on a Sunday morning um, with the silent generation 72-year-old deacon of the church who is very outspoken, knows how to pray heaven down, but also one who's at a place where he wants to sing his favorite hymn whenever he gets the opportunity to do so. Do any of us know that kind of person? Okay, let's, let's also imagine the baby boomer, 63-year-old mother of the church who is nearing retirement in the corporate world. Um, the Generation X, 46-year-old usher who still marches with swag and can't nobody tell him that he don't he'll still have it. The 32-year-old millennial new member that's excited about church membership and the Generation Z 16-year-old who is at a place where he's counting down the days that he can tell his grandmother, no, he is not going to church with her anymore. When we see church as these people, it reminds us that church is a living organi organism, I'm sorry, that is consistently evolving. Imagine church with all these generations present and spiritually hungry. In many churches, some of these generations are often absent on Sunday mornings. Over the years, church attendance has honestly become consistently inconsistent. It's like when Forrest Gump said in the movie, it's like a box of chocolates. You honestly never know what you're going to get. A research analysis conducted by the Pew Research Center found that only the baby boomers generation's weekly attendance reached 50%. We must confront this new religious identifier of spiritual but not religious, which simply means, honestly, I believe in God but not church. Despite all the world is trying to throw at it, ministry still goes forth with just a portion of the generations present. Imagine the impact and difference that we could make if all generations were present and hungry for the same mission and agenda. We are living in a world in the unexpected. We witness things on a daily basis that leave us honestly completely with our minds blown. The media, society, and politicians are trying to rattle the faith of believers. But we have to learn to handle these different points of tension now and in the future. Despite all the difficulties that encompass us, we as the church must continue to empower all congregants that are there of all age, reach the ones that have left, and witness to the ones who have no faith at all. The points of tension aren't going to diminish, but the church can use these challenges presented to recognize the barriers and the blind spot areas where all generations require attention. What am I trying to say? We just can't sit and act as if these problems don't exist. Why? Because these are real world issues that affect everyone in the church. Some generations honestly feel that the church has divorced itself from them. And the separation anxiety felt has now formed a wedge of brokenness. If we want all generations present, we have to act like we want them present. We just can't say that we want them there, but we have to show that we want them there. It's difficult to strategically build and bridge when you're missing intricate parts for succession. The message of our ministry in the church must reach everyone in the church. Every generation should be considered when developing or expanding ministry or thinking about the overall big dream. Sometimes ensuring that, that we minister to everyone in the church calls for the church to come outside its comfort zone. This challenges us to recognize that sometimes effectively ministering to everyone in the church, we have to go on the full, we have to come outside of the four walls of the church. If we want people to be spiritually hungry, there must be something present for them to hunger for. We can't expect the generations to be present in a place that they feel they're going to starve. 
The dream of ministry should be so big that it surpasses the imagination of the dwellers. It should be so big that it ignites a fire in the doers. And it should be so big that it slaps a muzzle on the mouth of any doubters. We should seek to maximize each generation's growth. All those present in the church are important. We can't expect our church or the people in them to increase if they are consistently subjected to a limited or minimal mindset. We need to cover all bases of all ages to ensure that the message is clear and everyone understands that they are needed to make the imagination and the dream a reality. One essential factor for generational presence in the church is to remain relevant. In order to remain relevant, you have to be willing to change. Relevancy in ministry is very important. Why? Because without it, people can begin to feel alienated. Over the years, the church has been labeled as a place that has become out of touch with reality. The excuse many use for not being affiliated with church is they say, I don't want to go around those people because they just don't understand. This is where transparency needs to come into play. We haven't always had it together, people of God. We still don't dot every I and cross every T. We are still a work in progress as we sit here. And we need to be transparent enough to let someone else know that there is no secret what God can do. Because the same God that fixed me is the same God that can fix you too. We as church people need to understand that we need to show them that we understand where they are are and if we don't understand where they are at least we're trying to understand we're not going to always agree with where they are we're not going to always agree with what they do get this y'all we may not always get it right every time but we as the church need to at least have an effort being made why we don't want ministry to become irrelevant because irrelevancy can then lead to ineffectiveness the church foundation is solid, but there are times when the program of church may need to be altered according to the era in which we operate. There is nothing wrong with having a shift in your service. There is nothing wrong with having a shift in your program. There is nothing wrong with allowing the Holy Spirit to take control. We can't expect to reach a modernized people with a stale, outdated approach. But we have to keep up with what's going on in the world so that we can know what's going on in the minds of the people that's sitting in the pew. We need to be in tune with what's going on in the news and what's going on on social media so that our message can be relevant to the people that we minister to every week in church we have to make the structure and the program and the language clear for all to understand and not just to understand but also to reflect purpose people are turned away by what appears to be complex the world is complicated enough the last thing people want is complicated church to be relevant is to be identifiable. To be relevant is to be relatable. The church has to be seen. And when I say seen, I mean seen outside of the church. So what am I trying to say? We need to get to the place where the community sees us, where they know us. We can't be relevant, church, if we're always in hiding. Understand the current culture of the people. This is what we need to do. We need to learn how to speak their language. While we, as people of God, are a little more spiritually grounded of our understanding of biblical doctrine, the current culture is one of impatience. Who wants to hear, what can God do for me right now? Anybody know anybody like that? Imagine church with all generations present and spiritually hungry. To me, that means this. Let your message be engaging and authentic. Don't force the program, but get a feel for what the people in the pew need. Many come to church spiritually hungry, and they honestly leave the same exact way. And when this continuously happens, this eventually leads to spiritual malnourishment. The church is at a place where when all generations can be present and on one accord, big things can happen. Yeah. 
When we think about the church overall, we can't help but think about the foundation on which the church stands, which is the word of God. The Bible is a road map. And mostly, if we can be real, a lot of us are not good with reading road maps. We can look at it. We can think we know where we're going, but we are thankful for some GPS systems. Amen. So many of us look at road maps and we get to the place where we look at it and we say, I really don't know where to go. I thought this was the direction to take. I thought this was the thing to do, but it didn't happen that way. And we can be real. Honestly, many of us look at church membership the same way. We struggle with church membership. Why? Because we're un trying to understand what God would have for us to do, where he would have for us to go. And sometimes that comes with making some bumps in the road. Sometimes that comes with some hiccups along the way. But when we find ourselves in that place, that's where we need to take and have people like you and I who can come and be our GPS to make it relevant for us. We need to talk to some people that can walk us through this journey and bring this road map to, to life in life. So when I thought about in the beginning, when I talked about the 72 year old deacon of the silent generation, I thought about the church and where our place is to him. And our responsibility to him is to keep him strong in spirit, even when he physically gets older in age and becomes weak. The 62-year-old mother, our responsibility to the baby boomer is to strengthen her faith that allows her to know that God shall supply all of her needs according to his riches and glory, even when she hits the age of Social Security. The 46-year-old usher with swag of the Generation X, we need to show him that no matter what may happen in the church, that this is the army of the Lord that you need to fight in, that you need to march in, and that you need to stand for. The 32-year-old um, new member of the church of the new millennial generation, we must provide that something for her that she was missing that caused her to come back to church in the first place. And for the 16-year-old Generation X, Generation Z, I'm sorry, we must plant the seed that grows in him that reminds him that living in the word of God is stronger than any weapon that he may try to present on the streets that he lives in. What am I trying to say? Our words and our work must empower all generations. We must reach everyone that is in the church. No one is more special than anyone else. But everyone in the church is important. And we need all of these generations present and spiritually hungry to see the big picture that God has for the vision of the church to be. Amen? Amen. That's all I have. Amen.